สวัสดีครับ So I would like to start by saying good afternoon to the distinguished chairperson and my fellow researchers. My name is Warren Pon Mai Gao, and it's my great honor to share with you my research entitled "Figure Speech in Best Actresses Acceptance Speeches in the Golden Globes Award." And I will spend around 12 minutes. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me at the end of my presentation. As a kid, I don't want to tell you guys how many years ago. I love movies. They meant so much to me. They took me to another place where I couldn't imagine myself as someone else, somewhere else. Speaking of which, a few days ago, I was so very happy. You know, actually, still very happy right here. You know that the Korean actress in the movie called Minari. Won the Oscars for her role, you know, best supporting actress. Um, her speech was phenomenal, hilarious, somewhat touch touching, as a matter of fact. And to tell you guys the truth, that as a language learner, I do learn a lot from her. At the same time, as a language teacher, I always encourage my students. To learn from these award shows, people not only have a great time cheering for their favorite nominees, but also subconsciously learn whether or not how these winners employ a variety of languages, including the stress pattern, the pace, the pronunciation, the word choice, or most importantly, the figure speech. Figure speech. Are considered to be one of an interesting part of English. It always appears in your life, such as in a conversation, articles of newspaper, speeches, novels, poems, and etc. Ladies and gentlemen, according to Weiss in 19, in 2013, figure speech are often used based on the fact that their job is to create tone by taking the words. And applying them to other objects, the concepts. In other words, it also leads to many, many other positive effects, making the material more pleasing to receive, and also helping their argument more convincing. Because of these fascinating traits and features, it led to the inspiration behind this research paper. Here are the objectives of my research study. First thing first, I like to examine the type of figure speech used in the Golden Globes Award acceptance speeches, and secondly, I like to investigate whether there is a specific use of the figure speech in these speeches and how they are employed. Let's move on to the next session, which is research methodology. This research is considered a qualitative approach using content analysis. To elaborate, it is involved with the selection of texts, the analysis of um, the specific texts in, in order to comprehend and draw conclusions about the content, according to Gritted in 1967, and. Furthermore, 15 speeches were purposely selected, and the scope right here is all about only winners for best actress in the reading role from 2001 to 2015. And the figure speech were identified and the connotation as well by the using the method of labeling and coding by Mines, uh, Heilman, Strass, and Calvin. As a framework right here, I chose six types of figure speech, which are hyperbole, metaphor, irony, oxymoron, which type is the most found. Let me take a look at the end of, almost the end of my presentation. So I'd like to show you some other results, some 
all the samples from my own findings. Let's start with hyperbole. This came from the speech of the best actress in motion picture, musical comedy in, two, uh, in 2003 by the winner, Rene Seviger. She said, Rob Marshall, I just love you. I will for the rest of my life. Be proud to say that I was in Rob Marshall's first movie. The statement has the hyperbolic meaning. Rene expressed the feeling that she was so proud that she was in Rob Marshall's first movie. It seems quite exaggerating in this context since it is quite hard for people to always remember things like this, right? For the rest of their lives. The hyperbolic condition of this quote is the exaggeration of the statement. So let's take a look. Let's, let's hear her speech right here. I just love you. I will for the rest of my life be proud to say that I was in Rob Marshall's first movie. Look at her movement. Look at her gesture and the rest of her life. Let's move on to the next one. Best actress in the motion picture again, musical or comedy in 2007 by the one and only, by one of my most favorite actresses of all time, Moral Street. She said, congratulations to the nominees of all the categories for best actress. It's like a million categories for best actress. What she right here has the hyperbolic meaning. Moore Streep congratulated the nominees in the best actress category. Actually, it does not mean that Moro did not know how many categories are there, right? But she might like to put an emphasis on the importance of being an actress in the Hollywood sphere, where sexism seemed to be widespread and true during that time. And that's right, the hyperbolic condition is called is the intentional exaggeration. So let's hear a little bit from her. Congratulations to the nominees in all the categories for best actress. All right, so let's move on to the next one. I will talk about metaphor. So again, this has come from the, the best actress in motion picture musical comedy in 2002 by Nicole Kidman. She said, I have some great friends who have taught me, shared their knowledge, their wisdom, and stuck by me. Susan Basson, a goddess. In this one, Nicole thanked and admired her friend, Susan Basson. Nicole compared Susan to a goddess who is beautiful, brilliant, and wholesome. The metaphoric condition of the comparing of the two unlikable things is to show the characteristic of the statement. So let's hear from her. I have some great friends who have taught me, shared their knowledge, their wisdom, and um, stuck by me. So Kevin Huvane, Rick Masita, Mark Epstein, um, Susan Batson, a goddess. All right. So let's move on to another metaphor from 2003 again by Renee Silverger. She said, Catherine, you are goddess, and I'm so glad the world knows what you can do. In this one, in this one, Renee said to Catherine, her colleague, Renee compared Catherine to a goddess who is so excellent that the world should act acknowledge the fact that Catherine is such a talented actress. The metaphoric condition of this, again, comparing to unlikable things, is to show the characters of this statement. So let's hear from her. You're, you're a goddess and I'm so glad that the world now knows what you can do. All right. And another one for metaphors in 2005 by Annette Benning. And she said, Brad and Billy Benning you my heroes. For this one, Anne said Brad and Billy were her heroes and it compared her brother 
and her sister in law to heroes, someone with, with heroic qualities, or having performed a heroic or act like her brothers who always help, support, and inspire her. And let's hear from her a little bit. Brad and Billy Benning, you're my heroes. And another one is from Morris Strip again in 2010 from the movie The Woods Wear Prada. And she said here, I'm very clear about the fact that I'm the vessel for other people's stories and other women's lives. In this one, Moro compare herself to the vessel of other people's stories. In other words, uh, she considered herself um, as someone with the ability to tell people stories through her performances. Let's hear from her. I'm very clear about the fact that I'm the vessel for other people's stories and other women's lives. All right, so let's move on to the next type of figure of speech, irony. Again, come from the Golden Globe in 2004 by Diane Keaton. And she said, a romantic comedy starring Jack and Diane, two people who come by ages 125. In this one, uh, Diane talked about Jack, Jack Coulson, and herself, whose age come by about 125 years old. The statement has the ironic meaning because Diane made a joke that Jack and, and her quite old so that at that time. So it's quite ironic right here. So let's hear from her. A romantic comedy starring Jack <laughs> and Diane, two people whose combined age is 125. All right. So let's move on to the next type, oxymoron, in 2004, by the Anne Keaton again. And she said, Nancy gives me a chance to play a woman to love one more bittersweet time. Bittersweet. Um, Diane described about her role in some, Something's Gotta Give. She combined two words uh, from different meanings to create new meaning. According to Oxford, Dictionary, bittersweet is a mixture of two opposing feelings. One is good and the other is bad. Ms. Sandra, you have three minutes left. Thank you. It creates the new meaning, which means something is good, <laughs> but there is a bad part about it. The oxymoric conditions right here. Let's hear from here. Nancy, give me a chance to play a woman to love. One more bittersweet time. All right, and the last one is Metonymy in 2003 by Renée Zellweger again. And she said, the wonderful John C, who is the star of every movie he does. In this one, uh, Renée talked about John C, her co-worker. And the, the star in this statement does not mean anything in the astronomy, you know, but the word star here refers to a very famous and successful person. It's, has the mnemonic condition right here. Wonderful John C, who's the star of every movie he does. So here comes to the last part of my presentation, conclusion and discussions. So according to this table, um, I like to conclude it this way, that the findings from this person's study seem to show that the most style type of figure species hyperbole for 11 times in element speeches, and the hyperbole is the way that the words are exaggeratedly communicated. Aside from the use of hyperbole, metaphors have the second position you know, of the most foul type by being used seven times, and simile was none, was found none. So I like to move on to the discussion part. Um, the discussion, I mean, that the current findings are consistent with the work of Wun Tong, who found in her work that the most foul child figure speech is hyperbole. And also in accordance to, with the outcome of the work of Wun Tong, regarding the least foul type of figure speech are irony, metonymy, and oxymoron. So I'd like to move on to the last part, the recommendations. 
Um, for other researchers who like to study about the figure language or figure speech, the use of figure of speech in local newspaper, poetry, and proverbs should be further conducted. And another aspect for further study is to explore the cultural values reflected or expressed in other, in other types of media, like songs or movies. So I think it's the last part of my presentation. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me it right now. Thank you. So uh, is it supposed to be me? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be me, right? To yes, first, thank you. Um, Thank you, Kun Walapon, right? I think I actually mispronounced your name at first. It's not Walapon, it's Walapon, all right? Sorry for that. And well, Sorry. I think your study is very interesting and the way that you present it is very nice too. I like the examples or the, the examples that you use to support your studies. Well, you. I have just some little comments. So, um, the first one is, um, as you are doing the investigation for the figure of speech used in, in the acceptance speech, you, have you also looked at the figure of speech used in other, other occasions? So um, you might want to make a comparison like what you found in your study in the acceptance speech and in other kind of speech. Mm -hmm. Have you kind of uh, had a look at um, other kind of speech and the figure of speech that they use? Yes, um, for, for the further, oops, sorry. For, for further research, I am thinking about doing something in the, actually last year, I have conducted my, I conducted my research at the Oscars award oh. and, and next year i mean this upcoming semester I, I think that i might do it with the bafta you know bafta is is another theme um award show that i really like you know and it, mm. is in in Bhutan, you know so i think that that's that might be another another one mm. that i, I would so do yeah, you are a movie watcher, certainly, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so it's nice to do something that you like. You will enjoy doing it. And I believe you you have the passion for doing what you are doing now. So that, that's a great thing. And I don't know if you have job in uh, like, like English language teaching at all. But uh, if you do, uh, we usually have question like when, you, when we do a research and we got some results, we usually want to see uh, the implication that comes out from your study that would be able to apply to English language teaching. Mm -hmm. Like um, how would the finding or examples that you use here be useful for, for Thai learners of English in the mm -hmm. way that they can use English better? Have you considered any aspect of this? Um, yes, 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 I, I really do, you know, because I, I have been teaching English for over 15 years, you know, and, oh, okay. and, and the, the, the very course that I really so into is the presentation class and oral mm. presentation, you know, and, and a lot of times when we talk about like the, the pedagogical implication, we talk about like how, how we encourage the students or learners to learn how to employ or to use the, the figure speech or the figure language in, in their own script, you know, because mm -hmm. like, like I previously talked about it, right? That, that when we use the figure language or figure speech, it creates the tone, mm -hmm. it creates the conviction, you know, that, that can really convince the yeah. listeners, the audiences to feel like, okay, that's great, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it links to the, the assessment and it links to the teaching methodology, you know, that how can we really teach them how to use this figure of speech, you know. So basically, when we talk about this, I, I usually talk about figure of speech during my, 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 my teaching mm -hmm. in that kind of class, you know, that mm -hmm. you should know how to put this one into the introduction part 
mm-hmm. it creates something, the feelings, you know, or it really draws the audiences to be into your presentation, mm-hmm. you know. And even like in the the listening speaking class, you know, sometimes when when mm-hmm. we have a conversation, we usually use a lot of figure or space. Sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. it could be ironic. It could be something mm-hmm. that. You, you try to use the metaphor, mm-hmm. something hyperbolic condition, you know, in, in a conversation. So, and it's 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 really important for language learner, uh, language teachers like us, you know, that sometimes when we talk to the interlocutors mm-hmm. who are native speakers of English. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't mean that they always use the literal meaning only. That sometimes mm-hmm. new connotations, and mm-hmm. and it's good for them to know. The connotations, the, the figure of speech, you know, so that they can understand the message effectively. Okay, that's very nice. So I'm sure you can see, it. I mean, the the bigger context of your study, like this, could be the study in semantic and pragmatic, and also the the narrow side that the example that you use is going to be useful for the students. I'm sure they would love to to see the examples that you are using in your presentations here. So I really enjoy listening to your presentation. So that's all for my comments. Thank you. Yeah, good